This island is 12 nautical miles from the mainland of Thailand. And the only way to get here is by boat, which leaves them completely at the mercy of the weather and tides. And on top of that, there are no government utilities, meaning they are completely off the grid and responsible for their own resources, like electricity, water, trash, and sewer. And when done wrong, it's a disaster. But when it's done right, it is paradise. And over the years, we have sailed to a lot of remote islands. And we've seen some incredible self-built tree houses, follies, and homesteads. But this place, by far, takes the cake. Not just for ingenuity, but for luxury. Because I have never seen such a beautiful villa. But we're not here for a tour of these lovely rooms. We're here for the back-end operations. The stuff that most people don't typically see because after running this place off the grid for 20 years, they figured a few things out. And living on a boat is a lot like managing your own island. So we're here to see what we can take away and hopefully it will spark some ideas for you too. Because, well, self-reliance plus sustainability equals freedom. And more often than not, it also saves a ton of money because just one of the systems that we're gonna see today saves them over $330,000 a year. So this is the island of Korachiyai. And we learned about it through one of our patrons who knew that we'd find some inspiration here. And he insisted we check it out when he heard that we'd be in Thailand because the Racha was born out of a love for the island and is the passion project of an engineer who lives by the mantra, when you take care of nature, nature takes care of you. So I think the logical place to start is inception. So before they even broke ground on this place, they worked with architects and engineers to best utilize the topography of the land. And they had two main goals. First one, protect the aquifer, so the natural water under the land. And the second one is cut down as few trees as possible because this was a coconut plantation. So they built around the trees and you'll see them coming through patios, through walkways and little notches in the roofs. For each one they did cut down, they planted two to replace it. And in the end, they only had to cut down seven trees. And with those trees, they made lamp posts along with scrap roofing tiles. So about the aquifer, naturally when it rains, the rain hits the ground, it seeps through the ground, the sand, the rock, and it fills the aquifer. That's what it did when it was a coconut plantation here. But as soon as you start building concrete, buildings, roads, it changes everything. In order to combat all the water just rushing into the ocean, which would affect the sea life, the coral, they have set up a series of gutters to catch that rainwater. So each road has a gutter, all the way down to the beach, there's a gutter. So it's catching most of that rainwater, pushing it into a holding tank, solar pumping it up into holding ponds, and then all the way to the center of the island where it will naturally flow through the ground and refill, replenish that aquifer. Water is our most precious resource, and it's gonna be a running theme here because they do a lot to conserve it, like this one that can be used anywhere that uses air conditioning units. Believe it or not, this is the air conditioner condensate. So it drips out of this little bamboo tube. They have these cups so you can rinse your feet off before walking into your room to get all the sand off. And then the beautiful part is, it's okay if I waste it because it's going into those same gutter systems and it's getting trickled back to the aquifer. So this one I really like because I've never seen it before. This is the air conditioning, obviously. And then right over here, we have the hot water heater. The way this is connected is the heat off of the air conditioner unit goes through an exchanger and into this tank. So this water is super hot and it's heated only by running the AC. It's the tropics, it's hot as hell. People are gonna be running their ACs. So now they always have free hot water. And it's similar to what we use on the boat. We have a heat exchanger attached to our motor. So when we're running the engines, our engines get hot and that heats our hot water. So it's very, very clever. Never seen it on a house before, but if your hot water heater goes down, it's a no brainer. Yeah. It's 
hard for me to pick a favorite portion, but this is probably my favorite because it involves food and gardening. This is the farm section. This side, we've got a bunch of fruit trees and it just kind of continues on. There's papaya. I'm not even gonna try to say what all they have here. And then inside here, this is what we really wanna show you because green leafy things are one of the hardest things to get on an island because, well, if you import them and you bring them over, they don't transport so very well. And then, well, they're hard to grow sometimes. But here, what they do is they have a hydroponic system and it's quite clever because they don't have to use any herbicides or pesticides because they have little misters. They go off every 10 minutes and apparently that is enough to keep all the bugs away. And it's clearly working because there are no holes in any of these little varieties of greens. They're all beautiful and perfect. So it's really pretty impressive and it only takes like 30 to 45 days from seed to be able to have something edible. So this regenerates very quickly, which means you will always have a fresh salad at the Racha. The lunch of champions. We've got our island Powerade and a homegrown salad. <gasps> And I'm like, 30 to 45 days, I think we can probably make something work on the boat. There's really no excuse for us to not be able to grow this, unless we can't get seeds, you know. We'll, we'll work it out. I don't magically just know all of this information. I took a pretty extensive tour yesterday because, well, that's something they offer to all of their guests, which is how I know that we also have a ton to cover and I've only got a couple of hours before the sun sets. So we're going to keep it moving. So now we're really getting into like the back of house stuff because they've got around 200 something employees that live here on property, add on the 200 plus something guests. And that's a lot of people who create a lot of waste. So as you can imagine, they've got a lot to manage on this side of things. Plastic water bottles, we all know are no bueno, right? Single use plastic is bad. And in an effort to cut that down because that many people, that's a lot of freaking water. They have their own bottling facility here. It starts with sterilizing the bottles that are empty that come in. Then they've got a reverse osmosis system plus UV. Then the water bottles get filled, capped, and even sealed. So that way you always know that it's a fresh bottle that is in your room and then sent out. And that goes out to all of the villas for all of the guests, but obviously it's drinking water for all of the staff, the kitchen. So no matter where you are in the resort or within the racha, you are always drinking that nice, pure water. Cuts down tremendously on plastic bottles and reusable cups because everything they give you is also meant to be reused. They don't give you disposable cups here. Reduce, reuse, recycle is a mantra they repeat often, but it goes a lot further than just having some bids like we see here. Follow me. So this is the engineering and carpentry department and they have like 30 odd staff members that are just engineers to fix and repair and maintain any and everything that needs it, including air conditioners to a car, transportation, a bike, a coffee maker. It could be any and everything that you see around here. They've got somebody to fix that. Or the carpenter wood shop to maybe revarnish something or repair a broken table or chest or what have you. And when something has truly reached the end of its life and can no longer be repaired, it gets added to the scrap pile here. And all of that, including the glass and plastic and any and everything else that can be recycled, all eventually gets loaded up and taken over to the mainland to facilities where they turn that into cold hard cash. And all of that cash doesn't actually go back to the resort, it goes into a staff fund so that that helps encourage the staff that if they see a plastic bottle in the wrong bin or put into the trash instead of a recycle bin, that they take it out and put it in the correct place because all of this stuff equals money to them at the end of the day. And then of course, there's all of the food scraps. So all the food scraps end up right here. And you'll have to use your imagination on this because unfortunately with COVID, they had to shut this system down. They can't start it until they have a critical mass, which means they need an entirely full resort. This system is incredible. It creates biogas, yes, fuel, and compost. 
And the way that it works is sort of like a cow's stomach. The food is ground up on a grinder. It's sent up a tube into this tank behind me. It sits there and there's biomes and microbes that sort of eat it away and it makes gas, methane. So then the methane goes up the hill and the solids are what turns into compost. So they take those solids and they said it comes out as like a not so pretty brown sludge, but it's super rich in nutrients and they use that on all of their gardens. And then of course that biogas gets pumped up into here and then compressed in this tank and it's used immediately in the staff kitchen. Unfortunately, not everything can be recycled, but what can't be recycled is burned in an incinerator that's Japanese style. It uses a vortex of air and zero electricity. So the next thing is one of my favorites, solar. Electricity, power. So this is only part of the solar array, but what's interesting here is these are water storage tanks. And what they found is before they installed the solar, those tanks would get degraded from the sun very quickly. So they installed part of the solar on top to help protect those. And then the main solar array is just over here. And what's interesting to me about it is they worked with a German company to design this system. And there was a guarantee in five years, this system will pay for itself. It turns out they actually paid for themselves in three years and they've had these solar panels for seven years. So essentially for the past four years, they've been getting free power. And the system is connected to a hybrid solar diesel generator. And what that means is when the sun's out, and these panels are pushing power to the generator, it lowers the fuel consumption and the carbon emissions of that diesel generator by over 30%. And this is what saves them over 330,000 US dollars per year, which is just incredible, you know? Yes, solar is expensive right up front, but we think it always pays for itself. Plus the hassle of getting diesel from the mainland to an island is not easy and diesel is very expensive and the price just keeps going up. So anyway, I could go on about that forever. But let me show you the diesel generator. Hold on, what? We're, not done yet. we're not. And that And wait, there's more. And what about this? Oh, yes. So all around me, these panels are put on concrete, but there are drainage ditches that go into another water storage pond for the resort. And when they installed this seven years ago, batteries were not to the technology that they are now, and they would have to be replaced a lot more often. They didn't want to create a bunch of waste. They didn't want to invest in a system that wasn't up to what their standards would be. But now they are looking at investing in a huge battery bank. And that might, just might, let them save even more money. Couple. These are the generators behind me. There's three total and they can all be synchronized. Plus they all run through a titanium heat exchanger which produces hot water for the laundry facilities and all of the staff housing. So we have brought in reinforcements for the wastewater discussions because it's kind of a lot and I didn't want to mess it up. So we've got Marlo here who is going to walk us through starting with not what you're thinking of wastewater they separate out the laundry water That's right. okay and why do you separate out the laundry water being a hotel we use a lot of water when it comes to washing clothes not only for guests but actually staff and then our linens and all those things a lot of water actually some people might think that it's actually going to be useful to water plants and all these things but not all detergents actually can help grow the trees sometimes it actually is more harmful um, so it's important. It's even if you're using all natural and exactly. everything else, it still doesn't mean that it's natural or good for the plants or for the sea. That's right. And at some point, of course, you have to realize that these water that you, you, you use, you don't just throw it away. We found a way actually to have a process where it separates the detergent. All the water that comes from the laundry goes to these blue tanks and there's a system treatment that happens. It separates the detergent and the water that is much more cleaner, much more safer, is funneled back into the uh, ponds that for later on for usage for watering the plants around the resort. It, nothing goes to waste around here. Water is, is very precious, but very precious. the whole idea of the fact that you can actually separate out the detergents and everything from the water completely blows my mind. Mm -hmm. I know this is a massive 
setup. It's, it's even bigger than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would maybe be a couple of small filters and I was really hoping this would be something I could like maybe adapt and do on our boat so that mm -hmm. we're not releasing. So you're not harming the, yes. uh, the fishes actually. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I'm like, okay, this is pretty large. I'm going to have to figure out how to scale this down. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Interesting enough, the process of separating the water from the detergent is more, much more complicated than how we separate the sewage system. Which is bonkers. Which is, it's harder I to get rid of understand. detergent than it is to get rid of feces, right? But speaking of feces, um, let's talk about wastewater. The sewer is a little bit more complicated to talk about. Again, you have to use your imagination because the first stage of it is in the ground. There's a process called anaerobic which basically kills off 20% of all the, the bacteria. So that's the first stage that happens uh, underground. Once that's finished, it actually goes to the gray tanks here. This is the second stage. It involves further aerobic processes, which kills further bacteria. Before it's pumped into the pond, they do a testing so that we can consider it safe. Ideally, it should be 20 to 25 parts per million. But for us, whenever we have it tested to this third party, um, it comes out around only 10. So you're like half of what the recommended is. Exactly. Yeah. And what's interesting is for safe water to be safe to drink, it should be 5 ppm. Ours is 10. So that actually, it's, it it's, means it's, it's even almost, closer. It's okay. yeah. I'm not recommending you drink. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. But... But it's pretty darn safe. Yes. Yeah. If, if safe enough for plants. For plants. Okay. If you really don't have anything to drink anymore <laughs> on the island. <laughs> but no, of course. Uh, but seriously speaking, yeah. We'll, we'll not talk about desperate yes. times. Let's hope they never come. So it's that safe when it comes out of here. So by the time it goes into the pond, which is like the third and final stage, right? I guess really that's just the UV from the sun. And, and making sure there's aeration happening. So the water needs to be moved around all the time. Yeah, that's the third stage before it actually gets pumped back to the resort. Uh, where it waters the plants and all those things. And once it goes into the plants, then it's back into the ground, back into that aquifer, and yeah, the, the cycle starts all over again. Impressive. The reason that all of the wastewater treatment, and everything else is so fascinating is because typically all of that just gets pumped out to sea. To be quite honest, on almost every island just about that we've seen, very few of them actually have wastewater treatments, much less gray water treatments, much less actually worrying about their laundry water. So it is kind of a big deal. It's the first time we've really seen it. We are right back to where we started all of this and we just haven't even scratched the surface, honestly. There's so much more going on here that we could tell you about, but I can only fit so much in a video because I mean, even like this pool is ozone treated so that they don't have to use chlorine or chemicals. And there's a coffee machine with real coffee beans instead of pods and so many little things. But I think for us, the biggest thing was we were just so kind of like, hopeful and inspired by just the extra efforts, like the, the dirty behind the scenes stuff, like the wastewater and stuff. Yeah, we're so impressed and it, it really gets us excited about, you know, for our boat, we have the solar, we have the battery bank, we have uh, hot water from our engine if we ever have to run it. We have solar powered hot water. Yeah. So it's like, we've got a lot. We moved with the sail, with the sails, like no energy required. We have a hybrid electric engine. So we've got a lot of those things. But. but there's still a lot of stuff that we don't have. Like yes. we don't have sewage treatment. No. <clears throat> we don't have anything that, that filters our gray water. You know, so there's, yeah, it's like we've got research to do. Cause if they're doing it here, it means that it's, it can be scaled down and we can do it on our level too, hopefully. So maybe. it has us excited. We yeah. were just blown, blown away. away by it all. So that's why we filmed this video today. And we hope, hope that something we cover today maybe sparks your imagination. Yeah. And if you have any ideas for us on the boat, how we can, implement any of those types of sewage water or treatment. Or something else completely that we haven't thought about, then definitely drop us a comment down below, or maybe you've gotten inspired for your off-grid cabin or whatever you've got going on. And if you didn't know that we're building a hybrid electric catamaran, then uh, I'll put that video <laughs> right here. That's it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you next, next time. time. Bye guys. Bye.